Any piece of literature contains all these elements. We could look at any piece of writing and look at aspects of phonemic awareness, phonics, concepts of print, text structure and genre, reading fluency, reading comprehension, aspects involving vocabulary. And, and this is really key. And, and, and so, so rather than approach this test by going through exam problems and approach this test by talking about what phonemic, phonemic and phonological awareness is, which is very important, okay? What I wanted to do is make a 10-minute video where we could explore these things in, and, and take another approach to it. So in this video, we're going to be uh, looking at Peter Rabbit from a phonological awareness, phonemic awareness perspective. We're going to think about the text in terms of sounds, the sounds that new readers uh, are hearing while they, while they get that text, and activities that could be connected to sound if they were, a teacher was doing a read aloud. We'll also look at other aspects, like within phonological awareness, we'll look at phonemic awareness and different things going on involving phonemic awareness. That's that ability to hear, identify, and manipulate individual phonemes or sounds within a word. I think that it would be also great today. I hopefully will be able to do it. We will be able to quickly talk about concepts of print and print awareness, which exists anytime a teacher exposed or anytime a parent or a guided other exposes a child to a text especially if this is early emergent, you know, exposure. So we're talking about infants, uh, nursery school, preschool, uh, uh, kindergarten, all these things are happening to raise awareness of print, that these symbols carry meaning beyond just, uh, just drawings. And we could also add in any other aspect that's on that list, any other aspect here. So I think we'll end today because we don't, I don't, I want to make this a 10 minute video. We'll end with phonics. And we'll think about this at phonics, and we'll do a little bit of phonics and sight words. So I'll do phonics and sight words, and we'll throw those in as well. And, and I think that this would be a, a, these ideas here, phonological and phonemic awareness, concepts of print, phonics, you know, um, sight words. These are all major ideas that we could incorporate in, and I think that we have time to do in today's session. All right, so we'll start here with phonological and phonemic awareness. That's that idea of hearing, identifying, manipulating sounds. And I'll start with the text because I don't wanna, I want you to stay tuned, all right? I'm gonna read this, and the tale of Peter Rabbit, and I want you just to, uh, uh, I want you just to hear it, and as you hear it, then we'll talk about uh, sound things, phonological and phonemic awareness activities that could be involved in it, okay? So here we go. I'll read the first two pages. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Are you ready? Here we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. And now, my dears, said old Miss Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mrs. McGregor's garden. Your father got in an accident there. He was put in a pie by Ms. McGregor. Then Ms. Rabbit went out. She brought a, bought a, uh, let me see. Next page. I think I lost something here. Um, but she goes out, she leaves them. And then she picks it up here and we'll end it here. And then Miss old Miss Rabbit went out and took a basket and an umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. <laughs> There's one line of text that I, I left out. It's not included in this picture. But, but now let's go back. Let's start here. And let's think about phonological and phonemic awareness. For some teachers, that's a new term. And so this always throws teachers off. What's the difference between phonological awareness and phonemic awareness? So we want to start with the big idea first. Phonological awareness has to do with hearing sounds or hearing those 44 phonemes. And, and it has a lot of different skills or skills that involve levels of skills that involve hearing those phonemes. There's, there's basic phonological awareness skills, developing skills. So let's think of skills as activities, tasks, where the child just hears rhymes and alliteration. They hear similarities in the words, like words that rhyme. Uh, um, these are words like, I'll go directly to the text, now back to the text. 
Words like flopsy, mopsy, you know, these are words that rhyme. They have a similar ending. Alliteration are words that have a similar beginning. Peter Piper picked a peck. A child that hears these sounds and hears that these sounds have similarities in the ending and beginning, you know, they're developing basic phonological awareness. We're doing an activity where we break the syllables up in a word like Peter, two syllables. The word wonderful, wonderful, three syllables. That's intermediate phonological awareness. And then we have um, individual phoneme tasks or activities. That's phonemic awareness. So let's look at that text a little closer. Let me find it. If I was reading this to my daughter and we said flopsy, mopsy, hopefully she's hearing that flopsy and mopsy have a what? What's this called again? They have a rhyme. So on a basic level, she's hearing that these words, these sounds, flopsy, mopsy, she's hearing on a word level that they're similar, that they have a similar ending. How about uh, an example of alliteration here? Let me see um, if I can find an example of a, alliteration. I'm not so sure I see one directly in this on this page. But if we saw something like um, ninny, nanny, netty coat or some repetition of the first sound, well, then this would be, you know, this would be uh, an example of alliteration where the child would be hearing similar sounds. If I took a word like uh, Peter and uh, and I asked, I asked Peter, um, if we asked the child, how many sounds do you hear in the word Peter? And they were able to break it up, Peter. Well, then this would be developing intermediate phonological awareness. And then we could take Peter and we could break it up. Uh, we could ask a child uh, another activity, another task. So we think of all these sound activities as, as tasks. And as we go up in the task, we go up in the complexity. But if we were to, we were, we were John's texting me right now uh, from the live feed. He doesn't know that we're we're still live. Uh, um, but um, I'll talk to you soon. I'll, we're going live. Anyways, uh, if I were to take the word Peter and I were to ask my three-year-old daughter, what sound do you hear? What's the initial sound where I ask her to isolate a phony? Because remember, when we when we talk about phonological awareness and phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is this third skill here, and it involves dealing with isolating and identifying individual sounds within a word. And I go back and I and I, I ask my daughter, what's the first sound you hear in Peter? And she says, P for Peter. Well, she will have done some basic ph uh, phonemic awareness. She would have identified a specific sound in the word. Or if I asked her uh, in flopsy mopsy, What's the last sound you hear in those words, flop C, mop C, and she says C. Well, then she would have isolated the N sound in that word. Or if we take a word like uh, uh, rabbit, and I say, what vowel sound do you hear? And the child, I don't think my, my daughter definitely can't do this yet. She's only three. But if she were to be like, ra ah, I hear a short A in ah in rabbit, well, that's another phonemic awareness skill. So phonemic awareness has to do with isolating individual phonemes in a word, the, the, the initial sound, the end sound, the medial sound, or segmenting and blending the sounds or substituting the sounds for another sound. So you, I could take Peter and I could take, uh, I could take Flopsy, right? And I could change Flopsy and, ch and change the initial sound flop into ma and get Mopsy. So this would be an example of phonemic awareness where we're doing substitution. Okay, so this text here could be used as an activity and is used in, in ways to develop hearing sounds for preschoolers. So we have a text and on one level, it can develop phonological and phonemic awareness. And on one level for preschoolers, it's a, it can be used as the text to hear sounds and do sound activities. Now let's think about it in terms of concepts of print. Let's look at it from another perspective and let's just really quickly review concepts of print. We think of concepts of print having to do with, um, you know, directionality, book handling skills, the awareness of print, print awareness. That's that idea that print carries meaning. And, and, and it's, it's something involving print, knowing what, uh, having a sense of, of that print is distinct from drawings. 
there's no sound in it. It's not an auditory activity. So print awareness and, and concepts of print are all things that are done, that can be done without sound. I have another graphic here on, on, on print awareness, okay? So anytime we're developing book handling skills, like when I'm holding up that text to read to Olivia and I start at the title of the page, or and then I move to the table of contents or the front cover, or I start at the beginning and move down the page as we start from the top of the page and move down or read left to right. Well, you know, these are these are aspects of book handling, how to hold the book properly, starting at the beginning, going to the end. These are aspects of book handling skills and they're part of concepts of print. Uh, that could be developed in a reading activity of Peter Rabbit or directionality. Now, I don't expect a, a three-year-old to start to read, but directionality has to do with reading from left to right. So when a teacher models reading from left to right, they're modeling directionality, another concept of print. How, we, how do we read print? We read it from left to right. So all these things you know, are modeled under this. And the big one here, the big one here is print awareness, that, that the symbols on this, in this book they, be, they go beyond the pictures. The pictures are great, but it's the symbols themselves. Here, let me go to the, the larger screen here, okay? My, our aptly deaf, whatever the, whatever the passages that we're doing. The pictures are wonderful, but it's these things right here, the writing itself that's distinct, that's unique. Uh, we know that a child has print awareness when we ask the child to go and get their favorite book. And they come and they <laughs> and they grab something and they say, read this to me. Well, they're showing basic print awareness, the idea that print carries meaning. Or we know a child has print awareness when they do pretend reading. Olivia loves to do pretend reading. She will grab the book before I read it and she will pretend to read. And she'll basically just say the same, same thing over and over again. The tale of Peter Rabbit, next page. The tale of Peter Rabbit, she's pretend reading. And, and, and this is okay, because at least she's demonstrating an awareness that she knows that this book with these symbols carries meaning. So that's, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's go back to the text. Within this text, or within any text, we have aspects of, we could turn this into an activity involving phonological and phonemic awareness. This is also an activity that's modeling concepts of print. And then we have another one, we have, have phonics. So let's think about phonics for a moment. Let me, let me find my, my, my picture for phonics here. Oh, oh here's a fun one. <coughs> when we think of phonics, we're thinking of letter sound correspondence. We're matching up these letters or, or, or graphemes with their corresponding phonemes. And there's all sorts of patterns that go, and there's all sorts of spelling patterns, letter combinations that match up with sound combinations. But, but in general, there are 44 distinct phonemes in the English language. Let me write that down. I gotta grab my pen, hold on. So I'll say it again. Phonics involves letter sound correspondence, and within, this, within any activity involving letter sound correspondence, we're gonna be taking graphemes or letters. I'll, I'll circle that right here. We're gonna take graphemes or letters and match them, uh, graphemes, which are letters, and, and connect them to their appropriate sounds. So we think of that as graphemes or spelling patterns that are connected to specific sounds. And when a child does this, when they're able to take letters and match them up with their corresponding sounds, so they're able to take the word spoon, and for each one of these letters or spelling patterns, they're able to associate that this makes the s, the p, this uh, letter pattern here, uh, spelling pattern here makes the oo sound in the end, and they're able to match it up with sound and do this letter sound correspondence, we call that decoding. And when the child is able to do the opposite, <clears throat> let's say they want to spell the word spoon. Well, this is an aspect of phonics where they take the sounds. What sounds do you hear? Spoon. And they're able to take the sounds and turn them into letters and spell the word correctly using the correct spelling pattern. So they know this, this, the, the sound oo corresponds to the double O. Well, this is an example of encoding. Let me write that here. 
So in this one right here, encoding, decoding, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're both connected to phonics. A child needs to know their sounds to do letter sound correspondence. Phonics has a lot of different aspects to it, but if we if we go back to this uh, this text here, <coughs> and we look at and we look at let's say this one right here, this one paragraph. Then old Miss Rabbit took a basket and an umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She brought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. We look at this basic text for a beginner reader, a narrative text for a beginner reader. We can start to pull out words like wood and took and loaf and brown and bread. Well, well, these are all words that a child would need to have some basic phonics for. Like the took has the, the double O. Took, uh, wood. Well, double O, it's a two vowels, one sound. It's a vowel diagraph. So a vowel diagraph is any time we have two vowels that make one sound, like in the word took and would, and also the word loaf. Look, loaf. Loaf has three sounds, la, o, f. But that middle sound is two vowels that make the o sound. It's called a, it's called a vowel diagraph. And more specifically, it's a vowel diagraph just like the double o, the double O in uh in took, two vowels, one sound, O O in the O A in, in lo oaf, two vowels, one sound. These are both vowel diagraphs. This one in particular is called a vowel pair or a vowel team. It's a vowel diagraph where the first vowel is long and the second vowel is silent. Okay. So if I was writing my essay, if we were writing an essay involving uh, a student. And we saw that student had difficulty with words like took and loaf. Well, we could say that they might have difficulty within phonics and more specifically within vowel diagraphs. And if you're seeing that at that level, that's awesome. You're already writing like a reading specialist. But if you wanted to go a little bit further, you'd be like not only having difficulty with phonics involving vowel diagraphs, but they're having difficulty with phonics involving vowel diagraphs involving uh, one of them is involving a vowel pair. So we get we can go into this. It doesn't matter how basic the text is. We can take this to the next level in terms of writing our essay. So having an awareness of phonics is important. And there's a lot of phonics going on in this very basic first grader, second grader text. Okay, so we got vowel diagraph, uh, vowel diagraph, also known as a vowel pair. Do you see anything else? Uh, I'll highlight them. The bruh is what? The br is what? Bruh? Okay, someone, I heard someone say over the computer line, they said a blend, right? So there's some blends going on here. How about, uh, how about the owl? How about the owl? What's the owl? Is that a, is that a diagraph? What, what's the owl? Well, everyone say the word owl. Owl and, uh, ooh, uh, owl, uh, like, look. W w uh, I'm sorry. Uh, t uh, took. I mean, it's uh, the uh sound. We got uh and we got ow. Uh, ow. What's the difference? Uh, two things, one sound, vowel diagraph. Ow. Notice how my mouth, jung, ta, uh, uh, move when I say ow. It's because there's a blending of the sounds. I'll, I'll do that again, get a little closer so you can see. A lot. Took, uh, uh, uh. Uh, no movement. So two things, one sound, no movement. Ow, like in bra, ow. There is movement of the jaw, the tongue, the throat. And we call that there, that word in the word, the ow in brown is a diphthong. So from a phonics perspective, looking at this basic beginner text for a first grader, maybe a second grader, okay? In terms of phonics, it does have a lot of phonics rules in it. That student would would need to know, have exposure to um, different phonics rules. They'd need to know their, their vowel diagraphs. They'd also need to know some diphthongs and some blends to decode, to properly pronounce the words correctly. All right, so let's review real quick, going back. There's lots of other things we could talk about here. Going back to this one right here, but I, I want to end the video so that you can think about this because this page here is the heart of your exam. 
Uh, and, and this goes for every teacher there, whether you're a reading specialist, uh, taking the, the 08, or you're taking the 90 or soon to be 190. The ideas that are on this page are essential. So just to review, let me clear this off. We could take any text, but a beginner text like Peter Rabbit, and think about sound activities, specifically sound activities, phonemic awareness activities, where the child is hearing, identifying, manipulating sounds, word, sounds and words. We could also look at, think about reading activities and think about all the different things that are going on with developing concepts of print. For a beginner reader, there's also exposure to phonics. At a basic level, it's knowing your alphabet, the alphabetical principle. But then as we get more advanced, our first and second graders, we're teaching them things like, like consonant diagraphs and vowel diagraphs, right? We're teaching getting more advanced. And as we get more advanced, then we add on the diphthongs and so on, and we get more and more advanced. But, but there's that element there that could be taught within a beginner text, which is definitely going to be needed for that first and second grader to read that beginner text. This is a narrative text. So it has narrative story elements like a plot, I'll add this in real quick. It does have, it has a plot. Peter gets into a little trouble. And, uh, and it also has the setting, you know, this is taking place underneath a very big fir tree. We got some characters going on. Our, our protagonist here, our antagonist here, it's all here within this narrative text. And a narrative text is definitely different than an expository text. And depending on that student's ability to read with speed, accuracy, and expression, we could evaluate their fluency or lack of fluency. And then we have aspects of comprehension here as well. There's also vocabulary. Last one I'll do in this text. You'll notice all this vocabulary is, is tier one vocab. They're everyday words used for basic communication, and they're made up of a combination of phonetically regular and irregular words. I'm just going to focus on phonetically regular and irregular words. Or, or better yet, you know what we could do? We could take a, an SEI perspective. SEI perspective, we look at words that are content words, tier one content words, and function words. Let's do that. Tier one words are everyday words used for everyday communication. When we talk about content words, we're looking for nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. So rabbit, uh, older, basket, umbrella, wood, baker, uh, Bot, loaf, brown, red, current, buns. These are all content words. We got nouns and adjectives. We got some verbs going on. Okay, so this is tier one stuff, content words. And then if, let's think about those other words, those function words, which are made up of a whole bunch of things like conjunctions and articles and pronouns. So let me highlight some of these words. Then uh, a and her. Uh, the, uh, she, <clears throat> these are called uh, function words. And you'll notice a lot of these words are sight words too. Okay, so team, all these ideas that are on this page, you could explore and you should explore when you're studying your test, all right? It's gonna make you a better reader. It's gonna make you do better on the test. And when you read them, when you go through these, ask yourselves, as you read a text, ask yourself, what are some activities that develop phonemic awareness in the text that I'm reading? What are some activities that I could do to develop fluency for whatever I'm reading? What are concepts of print within whatever I'm reading? This will help you to understand the ideas a little differently than just taking those practice exams over and over again. Okay, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. This spring, Go Academy is turning all the workshops into webinars. This is designed to help teachers continue studying and getting ready for their exams and stay at home at a safe distance. These classes are gonna be covering the same material as a regular workshop. We're gonna do them in seven hours and they're held on Saturdays and Sundays in the morning from seven to 10.30 on Saturday and Sunday. These classes are geared for teachers that are going to be studying April and taking their tests late April, May, and June. And we'll also be doing webinars throughout the summer. I encourage you to check out a webinar. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful.